y'all this is Kayla with Live Oak Nest welcome back to my channel today I'm so excited to share with you um, these little DIY wood wall pockets for faux tulips so this project is simple and it's not very expensive and it's perfect for your spring home decor so all you need to get started is a piece of wood you can pick up these little um, these short baseboard moldings at Home Depot or Lowe's and then you need a little bit of paint and if you want to do some texturizing and some crackling effects um, I'll show you the products you need for that and then you also need um, some fabric or an old um, towel that you can use and then some furniture tacks so to get started you want to just use um, any kind of chalk paint I'm using the Walmart brand Waverly and this is just their green chalk paint it's a pretty kind of mossy sage green color but this is going to be my very base coat so my bottom layer and I'm just going to get um, good coverage and cover the entire thing with one coat of this colored paint So I'm going to go back in here with a second coat of the same color of paint and if you notice I'm just kind of slapping it on and moving my brush in all sorts of different directions because I like the texture um, it adds I'm wanting this to look like an old piece of wood with lots of chippy layers and so when you're kind of messy with your chalk paint it kind of helps give you that effect so just kind of I'm going to go back in here and slap on a little bit of more paint on both of these and just kind of do it at random and um, don't smooth it completely out. I'm using a blow dryer to kind of speed this process along. Um, one thing that I kind of like when I use my blow dryer, if I have it on really high heat and get it close to the paint, it's going to overheat it and kind of cause it to bubble up. And I like that in some areas. So that's a good idea if you're wanting to create um, just an old look. It kind of just helps add to all the textures and the layers of paint. Okay, for this next process, I'm going to go back and add a little bit of texture to the wood. And I'm using Fusion Mineral Paints Fresco. It's like a texturizing um, powder that kind of gives you like this, this clumpy texture. So I am mixing that with a little bit of this green color that Fusion Mineral Paint makes. And if I were to go back and do this again, you could probably do this in the first step. Um, but I was kind of doing this as I went. So that's why I'm doing it here, but you could kind of take out a step and just do this from the, from the very beginning. Um, so I'm just going to mix this paint up. You want it at just a really thick consistency because just like the chalk paint, you're going to go back in and just slap on in all sorts of random directions um, this thick paste. And so here I wanted to show you kind of the difference with one side, the right side is just chalk paint and the left side has the texture, the fresco texture added. So it really just kind of gives it a nice um, texture to the piece and then it just adds even more when you start layering on more layers and do the crackle effect. Okay, so with those dry, we're now ready to move on to the crackling step in this process. So this is Crackle Texture by Fusion Mineral Paint. And um, you just want to shake it up really good and then kind of tap it on the table to settle the air bubbles. And then I guess you could transfer it to a plate and then move from, you know, the plate to your piece. But I'm just going to pour it directly on and then smooth it around. It's pretty runny. It kind of has... The consistency of like Elmer's glue um, but you just want to pour that on and then spread it out and you don't need to do this evenly um, it's going to kind of help give it a more authentic look if you don't do it evenly so you just want to kind of slap it on um, don't be too intentional about where you're putting everything the places that you do it heavier are going to have deeper um, cracks in the paint if you will and the places that are lighter will be a lot less noticeable. So I wanted to do a close-up here so that you could kind of watch the crackle effect take place. 
Um, the bottle says to wait 24 hours for it to dry, but I don't have um, 24 hours, so I'm using a blow dryer. You could also use a heat gun, and it's just going to really kind of speed up the process and speed up the crackling effect. This crackled texture does stay white, so you can paint over the top of it if you're wanting to go with a completely different color. Um, my advice would be to, if you're going to do a completely different color, to kind of do a dry brushing method, um, because if you do a solid coat of paint, you're going to kind of fill in all those cracks that you just created. So I am wanting these to be a little more creamy, kind of like an antique white, not such a bright white. So I'm going back in with a little bit of cream paint and I'm just doing a dry brush method um, all, over, um, all over these pieces. So if you're wanting to create like a chippy effect and scrape off some of the tech, some of the, um, the crackle texture so that you see through to the green layers of paint, now would be the time to do that before um, you go in with your other color. So because I did this all so quickly and I was using my blow dryer, I don't feel like it was really good and dry. And so I didn't want to go in and try to scrape anything off or even use sandpaper because it wasn't completely dry. So it would kind of just gum up and smear things out. Um, but if you did want to do that, you could let these dry over overnight really well and then go in with like a putty knife or a butter knife or something like that and kind of etch off um, some of the top layer of paint so you get more of that green base showing through. So all I'm doing right now is just dry brushing on a couple of different colors. So I'm using kind of a, um, a cream color, a gray color, and a white color. And I just dry brush on a little of each and then go to the next color and move my brush in all different directions. So this just kind of adds dimension and texture to the piece because if it's old and worn, it's, it doesn't need to look perfect. Okay, so with those pieces completely painted and crackled and textured, we're ready to move on to creating our little pockets. So the fabric that I have here is just an old kitchen towel that I had, and I just measured up um, the width and then how high I wanted my pocket to be and just trimmed it out of the towel. And so now I'm going to use my little furniture tacks and just tack them straight through the fabric and into the wood. When you trim your fabric for your pocket, you want to make sure you trim about um, a quarter of an inch to a half an inch total um, for the width of your piece. So that way when you nail in your tacks, you're not um, nailing it in flat so that you actually have a little bit of room and you're creating an actual pocket so that you can put your um, stems down in there. So now I'm going to go in and add my furniture tacks to the bottom of the piece and it's just kind of the same method. Just kind of um, press it down with your hand and upwards and so that you're creating your little pocket bubble um, in the middle of the fabric. Okay, so I have all my furniture tacks. Um, placed and this little one is ready for a couple of little tulip stems so these tulips I'll link them in the description down below um, you can find these on Amazon they're the real touch tulips so they look and feel um, very real but I love these tulips and I use them um, all through spring and summer really but they're just the perfect little touch for these wood wall pockets so after I finished nailing in all of my little brads, or my furniture tacks, I decided it didn't really look like my style. <laughs> so I wanted to lighten up the little um, tacks, and so I just grabbed some of my chalk paint and um, used kind of this feather brush. It has um, kind of wispy uh, bristles, and so anyway, it was really good to just brush on a light coat of paint 
on the tacks without getting it on the fabric. Um, if, you're do if you do this project, you can paint them, you can leave them how they are, and you'll also, when you go to, to buy your furniture tacks, there are many different versions. They have some really pretty ones, they have these bronze colors, so there's a lot of options. I just thought painting them this, um, this off-white color just kind of tied, tied the whole project together. I really think these just turned out so sweet and I of course put them on this little peg rack shelf that's in my kitchen. I love to decorate this little area for the different seasons and because of their size I was able to use command strips and just um, stick them to the wall. So you could also use like a triangle hook if you wanted to um, screw one of those into the back and then uh, put a nail in the wall, but the command strips, it was just an easy way to get these up and get them hung. So I hope you've enjoyed this fun spring DIY project. And if you're new to my channel, I'd love for you to consider subscribing. Um, I bring different videos and DIYs and home decor every week. So y'all have a great weekend and I will see you again soon.